Hello students, welcome. This is another day. I'm here for presentation. My name is Boniface, a biology teacher, presenting to you biology subject. The topic I'm going to present to you is reproduction. The subtopic is reproduction in human being. And the main concept of which I will focus this day is gametogenesis. Why gametogenesis? In the matter of fact, if you remember last day, I presented to you reproductive system, and in it, we saw the parts of reproductive systems and uh, the function performed by each part. And one of the major function of the reproductive system, we said, is gametogenesis. However, there were other two functions, such as hormonal secretion and fertilization leading to formation of embryo fetus particularly in a female reproductive system therefore in here we are going to focus mainly the events leading to gametogenesis and what comes after the gametogenesis First of all, let us see the inner structure of the testes. As we said last time, testes is the organ where male gametes are formed. The inner part of the test consists of seminiferous tubes. These are tubes in which the process of gametogenesis takes place. They contain Gemino These are diploid cells that give rise to spermatozoa But also, within the testes, there are cells specialized for sex hormones production. However, there are other cells which are mainly for nourishment of the 
young garments. And finally, the testis is densely packed with the bloody capillaries. Therefore, if you examine the internal part of the testis, these are main things that make the testis to perform its functioning properly. But also, let us see the internal part of the ovary. The inner part of the ovary consists They are graphian follicles. Within follicles, there are geminal cells that give rise to oocytes. But also, there are blood capillaries. For supply. It is densely packed with the blood capillaries uh, to supply blood rich in oxygen and nutrients. But also, there are cells there are cells for secretion of hormones and these uh, ovaries produce two hormones. The oestrogen and the progesterone. Therefore, if you look here, it means the inner part of the ovary is made in such a way that the process of gametogenesis takes place effectively. Therefore, gametogenesis, as we are talking right here, involves three main stages. We have mitosis. Second, we have growth. Third, we have reduction and maturation.
these are three main stages which any gametogenesis in mammals and a human being in particular must fall. The first stage of gametogenesis involves mitosis in which the diploid cell multiply several times to produce a large number of diploid cells. The second process is a growth here the diploid cell produced as a result of mitosis must grow and increase in size and he said is reduction the haploid cells produced as a result of meiosis, they are not yet functional. They must undergo cell differentiation to produce the cells that are more functional to effect the process of uh, fertilization. Therefore, here, they are cell differentiation. In such a way that the spermatids acquire necessary features such as the acrosome, the tail, the neck, so that it become functional. Therefore, these are three important stages of which any gametogenesis must undergo. A functional spermatozoa consists of The head that has a chromosome, cytoplasm, and the nucleus. But also it has the neck. Within the neck there are mitochondria. and centrioles. Then you have the tail. This is the flagella which aid the movement of the sperm. Therefore, these are things that must be acquired during cell differentiation of the spermatids when it is transformed from spermatid to spermatozoa. Dear students, I have done with spermatogenesis. Let us now see what we call oogenesis. As we said, this is merely revision, but eugenesis is a formation of female reproductive cells. Female reproductive cells, formation of it involves three phases.
The first phase occur during the fetal development. The first phase of eugenesis occur during the fetal development. In this process, the germinal cells that are within the graphene follicles divide mitotically to produce the so-called ugonia. The ugonia are diploid cells. Therefore, you have to remember that in a female body, gametogenesis starts during the fetal development. But this process do not stop there. It undergo cell growth. Here, the ugonia grows to primary oocyte. Therefore, at the time of birth, a newly born baby girl has large number of primary oocyte. Gametogenesis stopped there in a female body. It starts again at puberty. This makes second phase at puberty at puberty the primary oocyte divide meiotically to produce the secondary oocyte that stops at meiosis 2 metaphase 2 Primary oocyte divide meiotically to give rise to secondary oocyte and the first polar bodies. Therefore, it must be known that meiosis at puberty only takes place from meiosis 1, prophase 1, to meiosis 2, metaphase 1. That marks the second phase. The third phase occur when the oocyte is fertilized. When the male gamut is successfully entered the female gamut, it initiates the female gamut that is stopped at meiosis 2, metaphase 2, to complete meiosis division.
When this has successfully taken place, this marks the eugenesis in the family body. Therefore, dear students who have just joined me right now, the concept I'm presenting to you is gametogenesis, but I have done the spermatogenesis. Now let us see a flow on how uh, eugenesis occur in the female body. These are primordial germ cells in the graphian follicle and are going mitosis in a number of times producing large number of diploid cell, the ugonia. The ugonia again grow to increase in size producing primary oocyte. The primary oocytes so formed from a uh, growth process are diploid cell, but the next process is meiosis 1. which transform the primary oocyte, which are deployed in a number of chromosomes, to secondary oocyte in the first polar body. The secondary oocyte undergo meiosis 2, producing the utids. As I said before, these utids are not yet functional they have to undergo cell differentiation so that they acquire necessary features to make them functional for the process of fertilization. At the end, the oocyte that will be formed here will contain some very important features such as the corona, radiata, the zona, pellucida, cytoplasm, nucleus, and the receptor sites where the male gamete will recognize and bind. Dear students, I'm sure you have been watching this summary on how genesis takes place and this flow showing some important physiological processes and how these can be transformed to another cell. Therefore, after having done this, let me take you to sample questions that I have prepared to you to show how different questions can be asked uh, from this concept. I'm going, I'm going for the short break. When I come back, you'll get time to see number of questions that I have prepared to you that has been asked from this concept. Don't go away. Dear students, welcome again to this interesting presentation. The first question I have prepared to you here read, why mitosis and meiosis are important in gametogenesis? Why mitosis and 
meiosis are important in gametogenesis. The second question asks how does eugenesis take place in human reproductive system? How does eugenesis take place in human reproductive system? This is what I have been presenting to you, but let me take you back on how we can answer these questions. I'm going to give you the guidelines on how if you meet a question like this and how you'll be able to answer it. The first question, as I said, mitosis and meiosis are important in gametogenesis. Now, what you need to do here is to refer role of what is the importance of mitosis. As we said before, mitosis occur in a diploid primordial germ cell. Which are in seminiferous tubuli or the graphian follicle. Therefore, here mitosis multiply or divide these diploid cells in a number of times to produce as many as possible large number of diploid cell known as ugonia or spermatogonia. Therefore, what you need to do is to refer back the importance of mitosis in the first stage of any gametogenesis in a human being or any gametogenesis in mammals in which the diploid cells undergo cell division in a number of times to produce large number of diploid cells. That is the role of what? Of mitosis. You come to meiosis. According to this question, you need to refer to the importance of meiosis. Here, meiosis is there to reduce the diploid number of chromosome to haploid number of chromosome. Therefore, in eugenesis, the primary oocyte undergo meiosis 1, producing secondary oocyte and the first polar body. The secondary oocytes have half number of the chromosome of the parent cells. But also, the second meiotic division occur whereby the secondary oocyte are reduced or undergo meiosis 2 to reduce the number of chromosome to haploid cells. At the end of this process, we produce four haploid number of chromosome. But because some other cells received a very small proportion of the cytoplasm, they become non-functional and they degenerate. Only that the whole turn of eugenesis only produce one functional female gamete. The same two Gametosipatogenesis, in which the meiosis also reduce the diploid number of chromosome from the primary spermatocyte to utids. Therefore, the question here, you'll have to revisit the role of mitosis and the role of meiosis. Now, second question I've said, read how does eugenesis take place in human reproductive system. How does eugenesis take place in human reproductive system? Here is just to remind you that eugenesis, as we said, have important stages. You have 
mitosis you have growth you have reduction and differentiation therefore to answer this question you will have to refer what occur in mitosis what occur in growth what occur in reduction and what occur in cell differentiation that you will have answered this question but the matter of fact just remember what we have presented here in the beginning dear students i have done with the two questions let me read the third question and see how we can answer question like this and if in case other question will be asked in this way you'll be able also to answer this question asks you to ask you like this gametogenesis is a hormonal controlled process which lead to the formation of the sperms in the males and in the female why hormones are important in this process in my presentation i started by showing you the role of hormones in the entire process of gametogenesis i said that in testes we produce testosterone produce testosterone this has a significant importance in stimulating the spermatogenesis to take place but also you have to refer to the role of the follicle stimulating hormones and the role of routinizing hormones in the process of gametogenesis therefore because this is not the new concept just a revision program we are doing here you have to refer back what you learn in school the role of the follicle stimulating hormone in male reproductive system and the role of luteinizing hormone in a female reproductive system and the role of testosterone in a female reproductive system with regard to spermatogenesis there you will have answered how the hormones control the process of spermatogenesis coming to eugenesis here you have to know the role of estrogen and progesterone what does the estrogen do in eugenesis and what does progesterone do in eugenesis there you will have answered this question just to go back to the role of these hormones with regard to gametogenesis let us see the next question question number 4 and question number 5 these two questions asks you like this the structure of the gametes are modified to suit their role how is the sperm modified for effective fertilization now in the beginning i presented to you the concept of gametogenesis and in particular spermatogenesis and i show you what are the important feature the spermatozoa will have if the process has successfully taken place therefore to answer this question you will have to go and explain the role of each part of the sperm it means you you explain the role of the acrosome the role of cytoplasm the role of nuclear the role of mitochondria the role of the flagella it means in order for the spermatozoa to perform 
fertilization effectively need to have this important feature. Therefore, you will say what acrosome is there for, what cytoplasm is there for, what nucleus is there for, what mitochondria is there for, what flagella is there for. And that you will have explaining the how the sperm is modified for effective fertilization. But next question says, Eugenesis and spermatogenesis show similarities and differences. How eugenesis differs from spermatogenesis. Therefore, you have also to go back to my presentation. I presented spermatogenesis. You saw how the process goes. I also presented eugenesis. You saw how the process goes. But let me remind you. I said eugenesis has three phases. The first phase occurring in the fetal development. The second phase occurring at puberty. And the third phase occurring once the usati has successively fertilized. Therefore, that will show some differences that the eugenesis has three phases. The spermatogenesis is one phase all over, starting at the puberty throughout the lifetime of the male, while in a female occur during the embryo development. Therefore, if you go to that uh, flow description, you will see the main differences that occur in eugenesis and spermatogenesis. That is the core part of this question. Last question is question number 60, which asks the structure of the gametes are modified to suit its role. The structures of the gametes are modified to suit its role. How is the ova modified for effective fertilization? As I said before, a mature ovum will have the, the zona pellucida will have the corona radiata will have the cytoplasm will have the nucleus But also, we have polar bodies. These polar bodies degenerate and they are non-functional. And for that case, you need to explain what zona pellucida is there for. You need to explain what corona radiata is there for. What cytoplasm is there for what the nuclear contain and why is there for. By so doing, you will have answered this question. Because the role of these parts of the ovum ensure that fertilization takes place effectively. The oocyte. Therefore, as I've said, to answer this question, you have to explain what is the zona pellucida, and what is there for? You have to explain the corona radiata and why is there for? You have to explain the cytoplasm and why is there for? You have to explain the nucleus, why is there for? And finally, you will have explain the how the ovum is modified for the effective fertilization. Dear students, this is how you will be able to answer these questions and many other questions that can come from this area but all of them referring the same concept my dear students let us go for the short break after that i'll be back and show you the diagrams showing gametogenesis in both the male and the female productive system and the structure with the spermatozoa and who
site. Okay, welcome back. Before going for the short break, I said I'll be back for presentation of these diagrams showing spermatogenesis and the spermatozoa. After this, showing the eugenesis and the oocyte. As you can see here, all of you, this is uh, the diagram showing how spermatogenesis occur. Just to remind you that you have the spermatogonia, the primordial germ cells in the seminiferous tubuli undergoing mitosis. This mitosis produces the primary spermatocyte. The primary spermatocyte undergo meiosis 1, as you can see here. Division here is indicating that reduction of diploid number of chromosome to haploid number of chromosome, producing the secondary spermatocyte. The secondary spermatocyte undergoing second meiotic division, another uh, reduction phase, producing the spermatids. But spermatids, as I said before, these are non-functional because they lack some important features that can make it viable for fertilization. Therefore, it has to undergo cell differentiation in which some important features are added to the spermatids and that become the functional spermatozoa. Therefore, let us see the matured spermatozoa. Dear students, after cell differentiation, where the spermatid is transformed into functional spermatozoa, these are important features that the spermatid acquire in the cause of cell differentiation. You have the head that consists of acrosome, nuclear, you have the neck, where you have the centriole and the mitochondria. You have the flagella forming the tail, which will enable this spermatozoa to swim toward the female reproductive cell. These are important features that the spermatozoa will have to undergo during the transformation from the spermatid to spermatozoa. The next diagram shows the process of eugenesis. As you can see here, all of you, we have primordial germ cells, the diploid cells, as we said, which are in the graphian follicle. This undergo mitosis in a number of times, producing another diploid cells, the ugonia. As I said before, this phase, this phase of forming ugonia occur during the fetal development. The second phase is meiotic division, in which the primary oocyte undergo meiosis 1 to produce the secondary oocyte and the first polar body. These are non-functional because they has a small proportion of cytoplasm and the other necessary structures that will make it functional. The second meiotic division transforms the secondary oocyte to utid, in which another second polar body is formed. This is also non-functional because it has a small proportion of cytoplasm and other important structure that will make it function. But this meiosis one normally occur at puberty. And this is stimulated by estrogen. Meiosis two will take place only if the male gamete has successfully entered the secondary oocyte, where it will stimulate the secondary oocyte to undergo complete meiotic division from metaphase 2 to telophase. At the end of this process, we will make the ovum within the fallopian tube. This is the third 
phase of eugenesis. Dear students, after we have done the presentation showing how eugenesis takes place, let me show you the structure of the mature ovum. I said the mature ovum has the corona radiata forming the outermost layer. We have the zona pellucida, the layer next to corona radiata, leading to the inside part of the oocyte. You have the cell membrane just behind the zona pellucida, and you have the cytoplasm, this large part. Inside the cytoplasm, you have the haploid nucleus of the egg and the polar bodies. These are important features the oocyte will have after the complete oogenesis. But we said complete oogenesis occur after the male gamete has successively entered the secondary oocyte that it transform the secondary oocyte to female reproductive cells. Dear students who were watching this presentation, and maybe those who have just joined me right now, the concept I was presenting here was gametogenesis in a human being, in both male and female. We saw the important stages of gametogenesis in both human beings, male and female, that we have mitosis, growth, reduction, and differentiation. But also, I went through the phases of gametogenesis in female, that it starts during the fetal development, it goes to the next phase at puberty, and the final phase, or the last phase, occur when the male gamete has successfully entered the egg cell. But also, I went through some important features that the tests consist that will enable it to perform its function effectively. And the internal feature of the ovary that will enable it to perform its function effectively. Dear students, I was very happy to be here before you presenting this very interesting concept and I'm sure those who are watching at me have enjoyed the, my presentation. Hope to meet you next presentation.